1-800-348-1007. Thank you, sir. What a lovely message. Another county heard from. The Guardians game over. <laughs> Did they, oh, yeah. they mercy rule these yeah, dudes? 10-1 to one. One was the final yeah. there to close out that series. At uh, It seems like all season the Guardians have been having a harder time with the teams that are uh, below 500. Right. I don't know why that is. It, it mm-hmm. could be coincidence. Pure coincidence. Uh, but the Guardians will get on a flight to Tampa, and they'll be ready to play the Rays tomorrow night. A little bit before 7 o'clock is the first pitch. So 6-something um, is going to be your pregame here on the buzzard. Uh, Bill is out tomorrow, so tomorrow will be just me and Mary. Uh, Mary has had to leave for the remainder of today. <laughs> so it's um, <clears throat> it's musical chairs sometimes on the Alan Cox Show. What are you doing tomorrow? You're, um, you're performing, I assume? No, no, no. It's a little personal day for oh, yeah? my uh, girlfriend's birthday this weekend, oh. so we're going out of town for a little bit. You have big plans? Yeah. Are these plans that uh, are a, will be a surprise to her? No. Oh, okay. No, she knows. She had to, Is she it had gonna... to like, take off work and stuff, too. Oh. Are you going to like the Sybaris or one of those kinds of places? Yes. We're going Where to they the got Sybaris. the big F-tubs in them? Yeah. They got no, them. nothing like that. Did they have those out here? We had those in suburban Chicago. They were called the Sybaris. And like when you were in high school, when you were old enough to get a room, there were people that would like go there for prom because they had like the big, you know, they called them like romantic weekend getaways or something. Mm -hmm. But they would have like pools in the room with the slide. And some of them were more... A long, more catered toward the BDSM community. I don't know if it's still like that. They probably try to class them up. But I don't know if they had those around here. But in Illinois, they had, uh, I think maybe near Detroit, they had one too. Called They were called Sybaris Pool Suites. And I don't know if there's anything similar to that around here. But uh, I know we stayed in one, me and a girlfriend stayed in one one time. And you were almost terrified to get into the pool because you all you could think of was what had been happening up to that point in the pool. Some of them had the swings, the love swings. Yeah. You know, bolted. In, love you, swinging. You, yeah, you got to bolt them into the, um, into the beams up above. Yeah, make I would, sure you get them in the beams or else uh, <laughs> make sure it's uh, it's anchored properly. Well, right. That's not something you can just put in some wall anchors. I mean, you got to get bolts in there. You know, I, I would ask uh, when I got a little bit more moxie, I'd ask them if I could bring my own swing. And they go, well, what are you working with? And I go, I, I got a Taiwan basket. And they go, no, no, we can't accommodate that. I said, all right, fine. I'll use yours then. But those pools, you think they're shocking the public pools outside or at, like, the water parks and stuff. Boy, you go to one of those romantic uh, pool suites, and I'm talking early 90s. I'm not talking now. Now there's probably all kinds of different health restrictions. But, um, hey, speaking of water sports, Captain Fun's floating Fandango, Bill. We're going to be... Announcing this year's Alan Cox Show Cruise on Monday. I will have full details for you. It will be happening next month. That's all I'll tell you now. But um, it's brought to you by Circle K. I'll also tell you that because um, uh, they always end up being uh, fantastic partners for things like this. But I'm so excited to give you all of the details on Monday. I will start giving away tickets on Monday's show, too. And we're adding some new things to the to the cruise this year. I will also have Cleveland Orchestra tickets for you next week, too. They are performing the score to the Lord of the Rings first weekend in August. And so if you want to sit out there at Blossom, you've gone to one of those. Yeah, where yeah. they do the big movie. Great. What movie fun. did you go to? I've been to a few. I've been to uh, Star Wars. Yeah. It was uh, Empire Strikes Back. Yep. I've been to Batman, the original Batman. That one was at Severance Hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, no farts. 
the no farts. The Danny, no fart Batman. Yeah. yeah, no farts version of Danny Elfman's score. Uh, what else? I've gotten two other ones where it's not playing along with the movie, but they'll play themes from different uh, movies, and they'll do like Jaws and. Wait, how's that, like that work? Oh, you mean just a performance yeah, from the orchestra? Yeah, yeah. They're like, here's the John Williams score from whatever from, Jurassic Park or or Jurassic. They do Jurassic Park. They'll they've done Superman. They do all sorts of uh, iconic themes from movies. Yeah, they're fun. It's a really good time. I haven't gone yet. I should go. I'd like you to go. go Maybe, yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't really have. Uh, I saw Lord of the Rings once, and that was mm-hmm. fine. It's enough. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not super into Lord of the Rings, so that would be one that I probably wouldn't go to unless I went somebody that was more into it. Like I'm not against it. I just never got deep into Lord of the Rings, but it's still just such a fun experience to see the movie with the score. Line. Sure, like, yeah, it's, it's 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 a different layer to great. the to the yeah. proceedings. Yeah, so they're um, they're doing. Uh, we gave away tickets a few weeks ago. They're doing Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. That'd be a good one to go to. That is the week, last weekend of this month. That's such a no. Sorry, I'm reading it wrong. That was the end of June, so that already happened. Mm. Sorry. Um, but next week I'll have tickets for you for Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King. Is that the new? Is that the first one That's or the, the second third one? one? That's the third one. That's the third one that won an Oscar. Because the first one was called. Uh, Fellowship Not of the Ring. Fellowship, and then the what? The two, two towers, towers, and then Return of the Return King. Return of the King. All right. I had Vigo Mortensen on the show last month, and his people asked me. Uh, obviously, he wanted to promote his new film, but they uh, asked if I was a Lord of the Rings fan because they said a lot of people fan out on him about that, and that wasn't really what he wanted to focus on. I said I understand, and I'm not going to fan out on him. I would fanboy out on him with Eastern Promises or A History of Violence. He'd probably those be fine aren't, with that. Yeah, those aren't exactly franchise pictures. Yeah. So, yeah, so Lord of, the, films. Lord of the Rings, uh, beginning of August. Uh, they're also doing an evening with John Legend out there at Blossom. And for you straight ahead orchestral fans, uh, they're doing Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. Now, what happened, to, and again, I'm no, Bill is the uh, our resident patron of the arts here on the show. Um, I'm uh, not that cultured, I guess, not in that way. But I'm curious, you never see uh, full-scale performances of the first through the fourth symphonies. Tchaikovsky really made his name on that fifth symphony. He was the embodiment of, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And furthermore, did he top out at five? Is there a, a Tchaikovsky's Ninth Symphony? There probably is. But anytime it's performed, it's always at fifth. So I don't know, but that's what's going on. So anyway, I plead the fifth. <laughs> I, will, I will have those um, uh, Blossom Cleveland Orchestra tickets for you next week. Um, uh, Wolfie Van Halen's coming back too. Want to go see him and his band? I'll do that. Uh, Bush with Jerry Cantrell and Candlebox. Bush is doing a greatest hits tour. We had them on the return of Buzzard Fest last year, of course, this summer. Uh, We're not doing Buzzard Fest. So many things go into that. So many things go behind the scenes. A thousand things have to fall into place and work right for that to happen again. And I imagine it will at some point, just not this summer. But if you didn't see Bush last summer at Buzzard Fest, or you want to see them again. Uh, again, this is another show, and I do like Bush. I'll probably see a little bit of them, but I'm primarily going for Jerry Cantrell. So I am kind of going for the opener on that one. Gotcha. <laughs> but I do like Bush. You know, Gavin Rossdale. They're a great band. They're great, and he's a full-on, nice-as-hell rock star. He's not a young man anymore, but he still looks great. Looks great, sounds couldn't, great, couldn't puts on be a great nicer. show. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're somebody who is, I know that like the traditional age of the rock star has kind of passed. That's not so much of a thing anymore because uh, everything's very fragmented. So he's kind of the, the, the last of his kind, at least from my generation. Uh, past generations, you still got the stones out there and you still got the, you know, like Journey and Def Leppard. They're coming and all that. That's fine. But I will have those uh, all for you 
uh, next week. I wonder what's going to happen when there's no more real arena rock bands anymore. Like, well, I think that they're like you look at you know they just announced that Imagine Dragons tour, and obviously I think they blow, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people. But are love they them. doing? I mean, not even arena, but like stadiums. Like, who are the next generation of a stadium? Well, legacy acts. Y- well, I think of a band like Coldplay. Okay. okay, that's yeah. That's a band where I didn't even realize they were still packing stadiums, mm-hmm. and then they did like frigging two nights at Soldier Field last summer. So I'm like, wow, I am way off. But I don't know if people think of that guy Chris Martin as a rock star. Are you talking about in the Mick Jagger, Dave Grohl mold, or you're I'm just, just talking about legacy acts that can go on tours, like you know, Def Leppard and yeah. Stones, or but like do. These giant venues that are arenas, stadiums. They're definitely dwindling. Yeah. So, yeah. Because it is so fragmented now, you don't have quite a big... Like, I mean, Post Malone's a big star, but is he going to be able to make that move from arenas to stadiums? Yeah, I don't know. I think you're definitely going to have the transition from bands to artists. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think yeah. it's definitely There's fewer gonna, people getting into bands. I think it's going to be very yeah, a lot more artist focused. But even then, there's still there's still a lot of disparity between the top artists and you know the uh, like the people that can do a mid sized venue versus those that can do arenas and yeah. up. Well, fortunately, here in Cleveland, we're getting a few more of those mid sized venues. Right, they're going to reopen the Odeon. They're supposedly going to build part of that new Rock Hall uh, expansion is a venue. And you got the Roxy over at mm-hmm. May Halls now. I mean, like, there's a lot of, you know, most artists that are touring, they can't do massive venues. Right. And a lot of cities either have clubs or they have whatever their local stadium is. So but we're lucky. The more we- mid sized venues you have, the healthier your local scene right. is. And even in between something like the Agora, where you can fit. You know that that's a that's a theater versus an arena where you're you're getting twenty thousand right. people, but there's not really like a five thousand to ten thousand venue. Well, I like the Agora the- because it's like a it's a for a band it's a doable venue, mm-hmm. and for a fan, it's not too big. No, it it's still great. feels it's a, intimate. It's a great place. To it's see well a show. run. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, and then even a place like uh, Nautica. What are they calling now? Jacob's Pavilion. Jacob's Pavilion. Yep. I love that place. That's a I great do place to see a show. And they can – that's probably the most in-between between the Agora and the, you know, Romo Fijo because I think their cap is like 10000 or so. Something like that. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, decisions to be made. Mm-hmm. A couple years ago, you guys may have talked about it at the time, there was a video going around of a Taco Bell employee who was probably 18, 19 years old, and someone paid with a $2 bill and he thought it was fake. Uh, and they, nobody in the Taco Bell had ever heard of a $2 bill. <laughs> hey, man, somebody's mm-hmm. passing off uh, counterfeit bills back here. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's what I think, because, um, you know, again, the, the $2 bills are still out there. They're still in circulation. It sounds like some people are. Maybe hoarding is too strong of a word. But you might recall, it's got to be 25, it's got to be almost 30 years ago. The first album from a band called Limp Bizkit. Mm. Right? It was called $3 Bill, y'all. Now, how do you get a $3 bill when a $2 bill and a $1 bill love each other very much? I mean, they had a song called Counterfeit on that album. If you go back to OG Limp Biz Kit, it's on there. So am I, am I saying that there's some kind of conspiracy between Limp Biscuit and the United States Treasury Department? Because they don't still make $2 bills. I will let you do your own research. I'd say probably it's the thinnest of connections between the debut album. Because I know what you're saying. You're going, Alan, please. Are you trying to tell me there's a connection between 
the two dollar bills in circulation in this country and Limp Biscuits debut album three dollar bill y'all I'm not saying there is I'm saying you can do your own research isn't that what people like to do now they like to yeah, do their own research that. that's what people are saying all the time I'm just agreeing with you do your own research what could go wrong with that Alan, they do have those F pool places outside of Toledo. My wife and I have gone a bunch of times. Each pool has a massive filtration and treatment system. Uh, yeah, well, that's why those rooms are expensive. That's disgusting. What's the what's the name of this place so I can avoid it? <laughs> yeah, so I can, uh, it's probably next to, what was that? Is Connections still open in Toledo? No, they've been gone for Long time, right? 10 years, 12 yeah. years. All right. I miss Connections. Connection is great. Um, there was two. There was one in Lansing as well. Oh, and it. I would. I remember the first time I went to the Lansing one. There was like a hot tub place down the street from it, and I was making fun of it, and people were loving it. Yeah, because it was. Yeah, just like a hot tub. You go in with your lady. You get in a hot tub, and then you 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 bring some drinks. Do what you're gonna do in the hot tub, and then get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a that's a full array of options. That's a broad spectrum experience right there. Mm-hmm. Alan Greta Van Fleet can do big venues. Yeah, that's one. That's actually a, a great. Uh, it's a good example. Good they example. are young, and but, they're young, but, and they're building and they're building an audience that is showing up at arenas, and they could, I see, someday make that leap to doing a stadium tour. But I'm wondering. I mean, if, country music has plenty of people yes. that can do that. Yep. I'm wondering though what the trajectory of Greta Van Fleet is will continue to be now that they have kind of gotten out of their we're just ripping Zeppelin off phase because they're young guys. Yeah. You know, you you your influences are all over you, and so they come out of the gate. The reason they had such a broad audience is because they sounded like Led Zeppelin. But if they can. Keep putting out music that people enjoy, whether or not it sounds Zeppelin esque. Right. Is one because you got a band that was like the pre uh, Greta Van Fleet was Wolf Mother, where they also sounded just like Zeppelin, but they were kind of a couple albums and out. They were. Yeah. Yeah, from Australia, I yeah. think. Great band, though. I, I love I Wolf Mother. Live. We were playing them when I when I was uh, on in Chicago. We were playing, uh, what was the woman was the big song from them. Yeah. And they were, yeah, they were trying to kind of get it going. And and, yeah, Joker and the Thief and White Unicorn. Mm-hmm. I think they're still around. Yeah, but I just don't think they, I, I, I don't think, they've leveled off. You think so? Yeah. Hmm. You know who's playing drums on this? The great, great Josh Freese. Oh. Who's now the permanent member of the Foo Foo Fighters. Fighters, Yeah. Yeah. He was a studio guy for a long time. Yeah, these guys, we used to do a huge uh, week, week long of multiple nights Christmas show at my station in Chicago, and we had Wolf Mother on one year, and yeah, they were great, man. Awesome. So all these guys... But you're right, it it is very... I forgot about these guys. It is very reminiscent of what Greta Van Fleet was doing when they first kind of came back. I saw these guys with uh, Don Jameson and Jim Florentine in my early days of doing comedy. Really? Yeah. We went to... We saw them at the Agora. Yeah. Before it was all restored and stuff, but it was a great show. Yeah. Yeah, there were there was a maybe fifteen, almost twenty years ago. There was a whole spate of like those kinds of bit. Like Jet was coming out yeah, of Australia Jet, uh, and Wolf that, Mother. And, was the God, they were a Queen ripoff? Who was it? Uh, well, I don't know. Foxy the, the Shazam. Darkness. Oh yeah. The darkness. I believe Where in a thing called go? love. That's a great song. Well, I think they. Um, I think that they blew up so fast that yeah. that dude just started like getting hammered all the time mm. and 
And the song is ridiculous, by the way. So you really only want to perform it yeah. so much. And then I think it, it made it to Guitar Hero or one right. Rock Band or something. They're still around, though. Plus, you got to do that falsetto every night. That cannot be easy. You're drinking all night, and you're overdoing your Cockney accent. I mean, at the time, everybody was like, oh, this song's really good. And when I you hear like it pop it. up now, yeah. you go, this song's terrible. No, it's great. I oh, love it. Oh, it's so... Oof. But Jet was great, too. Yeah, I love Jet, Jet was great. Yeah. Moniskin, somebody suggested. Boy, this company is trying to make Moniskin happen. Something fierce. They're from Italy, and they're, like, doing this kind of, like, glam rock thing. It's fine, it's but fine. I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, uh, I like the, the struts. They kind of have that nostalgia factor yeah. to them but they never really popped that big remember the hives oh the hives, were good, hives yeah. were another one yeah all that uh ipod Mid- advertisement yes. music was uh, <laughs> that's right was very uh the strokes and yeah the, all know. the strokes uh in sam morell's new special i just watched Rep- it yeah reptilia night. is the song he walks out to and it's like like he, he got the rights to, for reptilia by the strokes and i was like that is awesome yeah no I that's watched, a great song i watched it last night but funny, right? Yeah. This song, yeah, and this reptilian? Yeah. yeah. All right, listen, I got to take a break here. I'm late. I will have another $1,000 for you uh, right around 4.30. And coming back, I'll have those tickets for comedian.